Welcome back to Siemens Basic Training. This is video three. In the last video we showed you the basics of adding the SLC devices. Now we're going to show you adding a few more to the a few more peripherals to the hardware. And we're going to add some duct detectors and show you some very basic controls. So to start us off, we're going to add an additional NAC board. By default, the 922 or 924 comes with two NAC circuits. It has an optional board to add two more NAC circuits. That's hooked up to the peripheral board. If you open up, you can see the onboard NAC with the two NAC circuits. If you right click on the peripheral board and hit new, you can see the options. On the board, you can add a city tie, a lease line, and there's an optional NAC. Adding the optional NAC will make this appear. Oops, I didn't mean to try to move it. But there are no NACs here. You have to add the NACs. So you right click on the optional NAC, new, and it gives you a choice. You can add one class A or two class B's. I'm going to add two class B's. Now when you add the class B's, if you notice there is a yellow exp explanation point on these, that means these are not assigned. Nothing will ever trigger these NACs to go off as it currently stands. These are going to go off for any alarm, the ones that are on the panel by default. We want to make these additional two go off for any alarm, just like the first two. To make that work, we're going to go to the Control tab. If you open up by default, it adds an automatic or alarming control group. Let's open that up, and you see it adds one for general NAC control. And the cause on here, if you open it up, would be an alarm. 922 event, alarm verification. The effects, it has to two NACs. We want to add two more NACs, so we will click on effects, and we will right click and assign. We're going to add these two NACs. You can add one at a time or click on both and hit assign and close the window. Now, if we have an alarm, all four NACs should go off. And with that, the NACs should be totally functional. The next thing we're going to add is uh, we're going to add a remote terminal or a remote enunciator, if you will. Now, if you're not sure where to add this, you can feel free to click on each one of these and hit new and see what shows up. Well, not there. We're looking to add a RS-485. Does it go on the CNET card? No. Does it go on communications? New. There's an RS-485. So we add that in and it adds it right here. Now, by default, the system will add the RS-485 as a Class A circuit. If you do not wish to use Class A, which I rarely do for most systems, there is a checkbox here. You can uncheck it, and now it's Class B. After adding the RS-485, you have to add the enunciator. In, my, in this case, I'm going to be adding the FT-2015. So you're going to add that to the RS-485 by right-clicking, New, and there it is, FT-2015. It assigns it address 1. If you don't want it to be address 1, this is where you would change it, right here. But address 1 is fine for me. But note, we have the yellow exclamation point, which means this is not going to show us anything at this point. We have not assigned this to do anything. So we have a device that has no function. To add a function to this, we're going to go to the Operation tab. Now here you show your multiple panels. In this case, I only have one panel, the FC922, and we're adding an enunciator to this. So we're going to right-click on the 922, New, and there's a remote terminal configuration. Now opening this up a little more, you see it has the PMI and has a remote terminal. Now you might have a multiple remote terminals, so you have to assign this still. So click on remote terminal, right-click, and assign. And it should appear. There it is, an FT2015. So you can have multiple and you pick the right one. So address one is the one we want for this. Now at this point, it's still not doing anything for us because we still haven't told it what do we want to see here. So for that, we have visibility. If I right click on visibility and hit assign, I can say just show me the entire site. And what that will do is if we had one panel, we have 20 panels. It doesn't matter, it's going to show us everything. Um, in this case, since we only have one panel, it doesn't matter if we pick site or panel, it's the same thing. But you can limit it down to a certain area. Again, if you have 
a high-rise building with 20 floors and you want this enunciator just to show the floors one through four, you can select that. But in this case, I'm just gonna pick the site. So now the panel is gonna show, the remote terminal is gonna show the same thing as the panel. But let's just say this remote terminal, we actually don't wanna see everything. This is uh, gonna be kinda in a common area. We only wanna see if there's alarms. If there's a trouble, we don't wanna show it on the enunciator, only on the main panel. So to hide the troubles on the enunciator, by clicking on site slash site, you have an option right here that says all event categories visible. We're going to uncheck this. What do we want to see on here? Uh, yeah, we want to see alarms and show me supervisories. And that's it. Don't show me any troubles or activations or any information. Just these two things. Now our enunciator is only going to show us alarms and supervisories. If you want to change that, this is where you would go. And that's your basic for enunciator. Now we're going to add four duct detectors. I'm going to show a couple of methods before how to add duct detectors. We're going to add them all right here. I'm going to do the create and assign method on detection. And it's going to be an OP921, but it's going to be supervisory. I don't want an alarm. So supervisory. Choose the appropriate device. I'm looking for the OP921. Because this is a duct detector with a relay, we're going to say with output. I'm actually making four devices here. And these are all going to be on duct air handler one. Now afterwards, I'm going to actually update this a little more. I'm going to call this one Supply 1. Supply 2. Return 1. And Return 2. Now, in the supervisory tree here, it only has the smoke. But we had that with output. So if you look at the hardware tree, the parent has two children. It has the fire sensor and the output. So the output right now has the yellow exclamation point. It means it's not going to be used at all at this point. But we want to use it. So we're going to go to control. And you got the fire control group. And we're going to make a new fire control, just a standard fire control. And the basics of what you would do here is you'd have a cause and effect. And for the most basic cause and effect, it's an OR command. So if any one thing happens in the cause, we cause the effect to happen. So we're going to call this control. Customer text, we're going to call this air handler duck control. The cause will assign it. Before we do that, actually, I will make four copies of this for stick anything in there. So over here, I'm going to control on the fire control, and then on the group, I'm going to paste it three more times. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and start assigning. I'm going to open up all these because I'm going to assign everything at once. So assign this cause. Cause is not an alarm because we did supervisory, so you'll never find it here. Which can frustrate some people. Frustrate some people. Be like, I see it right here. Why can't I click it? Because it's supervisory, and you're only looking at alarms. So let's open up supervisories. And now you should be able to open up and find it. There we go. Duck one supply assigned. We'll go ahead and continue here just with all the causes. It's duck two supply. Return 1 and return 2. Let's go ahead and sign all the effects. And so he took us to the first sub level 1, which was on the FTCIO. We want to go down here to the duct detectors. So this one's for output. We go to the next one. And 
And the last one, whoops, click the wrong button. And we have this one here. Now, if you can visualize, we have four controls, and we're saying for this dot detector, dot detector, um, I forget what this number was, but if this dot detector goes off, the relay associated with that dot detector will trigger. So if we run the wire to that, it will trigger that relay. So this creates a scenario, and I drew a really crude picture here. Imagine we have a big air handler, and we actually have these ductwork coming in. We have two returns on the left side, two supplies on the right side. And I've seen some technicians, and they would run a wire, a shutdown wire, to all four duct detectors, and then run it to the blue box, which would be the shutdown. So they would have to figure out relay logic to run it, to run one wire that all four duct detectors were, if any one would trigger, it would shut down the unit. So first they have to figure out if it's normally open or normally closed connection for the shutdown, and then wire the four relays. And then you're hoping that it's kind of clear to run between the four duct detectors. Now, there is an easier method for you. We want, if this return one triggers, we want to shut down the unit. But supply two, this duct detector is actually really close. So instead of running a wire that gets us from one all the way here to two to get to the unit, we can do it all in programming. So let's go back to programming. Right now we have four separate controls, and we're saying if return one goes off, we trigger that relay and return one. But instead, if we said, we're going to delete these controls now. And I'm going to show you another method. Again, I said this was an or. So if anything here in the causes goes off, it's going to trigger the effects. So in the causes, if we added all of the detectors here for that air handler unit, again, it's supervisory. We said two, three, and four. Okay. All four were in there. And the effects, we're going to pick all, all of them again. Now this control is saying if any one of these four go off, we're going to trigger all four of the relays. And to go back to the crude picture, we're saying, hey, if return two goes off, all four of these relays trip. If return one goes off, all four of these relays trip. So what that means is, if it's really easy to run the shutdown wire from supply two to the shutdown box, that's all the shutdown wire you need to run. So I'm just gonna draw a really crude picture here. We're just gonna run the shutdown wire from here to here. Knowing that any for these dot tethers, if they initiate an alarm sequence, this right relay will trip and shut down air handler, saving you frustrating time figuring out how to run wires and how to wire up multiple relays together. Just pick the closest one. Do it through programming.